your own deck with Ursula Camille. And this is The Triage Room. The Triage Room is a podcast that encourages and empowers listeners to overcome obstacles of pain. Pain is the physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. When we describe the type of pain we're having, we're really describing the symptoms. Once we identify the symptoms, then we can deal with the root. Welcome to The Triage Room. You're now on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is the triage room. Today's topic, ninth hour distractions. Let's look at Matthew chapter 27, verses 46 through 49. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, When they heard that said, this man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Here we can see Jesus while on the cross after the darkness had covered the land and he's in the ninth hour where he's cried out to God. And now you have those who misinterpret what he's speaking. And then you have those who are standing by in their own way saying, let's see how this thing is going to turn out. When we look at ninth hour distractions, Jesus is in the process of being crucified on the cross for our sins. This is purpose. There are those that are misinterpreting his words as he's crying out to God. There are those who are standing by waiting to see how everything was going to turn out. If he was who he said he was waiting to see how everything was just going to show itself to be ninth hour distractions are those things where you are in the process of fulfilling purpose on your journey to purpose and hear those things that try to take your words and twist them, try to take what you're doing, the understanding of who you are and where you're going and what is about to be fulfilled to try to take it and twist it to try to take it and sit around and say, we're going to see how things are going to work out. Though some things were already shared and Christ had already taught and Christ had already taught and explained. He spoke in parable. He led by example. And here he is on the cross in his process for purpose, being crucified for our sins. And there are those taking his words of, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakathani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And taking it and making their own interpretation as they stand by and watch. And even to say, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Ninth hour distractions are those distractions we cannot afford to have. We cannot afford to allow those things, though you may hear them, Though you may hear those things being spoken, though you may have knowledge of what is around you, you cannot allow these distractions in your ninth hour, your time of purpose, your time of focus, your time that is really, really important to remain where you are and not lose focus because of what you're hearing on the outside, outside influences, outside voices, things being spoken around you. Eyes you know that are watching you closely because they have yet to understand all that has already been shared. They have yet to understand the truth of what things are. They have yet to understand and believe. So these things work together to try to pull your focus from where you should be going towards purpose. The ninth hour. You don't have time to turn around and address Something that is there to tempt you to address. You don't have time to come and have a whole full-blown conversation about something when you're in the middle of going towards where you know you should be going. The time wasted or the energy given to these ninth hour distractions will pull you from where you need to be in your time of going in the direction where God has you to go because this is all about fulfilling purpose. You're on your journey to purpose. What would have happened? Why Jesus... Being on the cross in the process of being crucified for our sins 
He's talking to God saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakathani. If he would have taken the time to address that outside influence of voices standing on the sidelines speaking, this man calling for Elias. He's having his time and what he's saying to God. Ninth hour distractions come in different forms. These are two examples. What is spoken and those watching to say, let us see how it's going to turn out. You're on your journey towards purpose and because it's dark and because it looks a certain way to those who don't get it. Because see, this is between you and God anyway. So those that are on the outside looking in, those that are on the sideline watching, they're going to have something to say. Taking your words and making them what they want them to be. Taking your words and saying things so you can come and address when your focus needs to be on where you're going. Your focus needs to be on this journey of purpose, fulfilling purpose and understanding the darkness and all that you're dealing with. All of this, even the people that are saying certain things, even those that are standing around watching is all a part of you being able to go towards purpose and be focused and not entertaining these ninth hour distractions. Ninth hour distractions come to frustrate Put you in position to come from where you know you should be. To continue trying to explain who you are, what you're doing, the what, the when, and the why. When all of that is between you and God. As Jesus has this cry with a loud voice and he's talking, my God, my God. This is between him and God. Outside voices having opinions are ninth hour distractions. Distractions while you are on your journey. Ninth hour distractions also come in the form of, here you are, you're right where you know you should be. And maybe those that are saying things and those that are misinterpreting your words and maybe those that are standing by watching to see how this is gonna turn out. Maybe that hasn't really gotten to you. Maybe you're in a different space, but ninth hour distractions also come in the form of lack of planning and making that your emergency. So we can even look at this, not taking all that was already shared and already taught and how Jesus already led by example. Now here he is in the moment of dying for our sins, being crucified on the cross and those that still, we're going to see how this is going to turn out. If you have those that come and here it is that they haven't taken the time, all that you've already shared, all that's already been given. You may have given insight. You may have explained, look, this right here needs to be done. And yet, instead of taking the time to prepare, they want to take their lack of planning and make it your emergency. Meaning they want to take their lack of planning and pull you off a of focus of where you know you should be and now have you take where their lack of planning has been and now put that as priority. That's a ninth hour distraction, which brings on frustration, can bring on stress, can bring on anxiety, and can pull you from where you know you should be. Ninth hour distractions are just that. They're about you either staying focused in that time when they come because you understand where you are, you understand where you're going, you understand what you should be doing at this time, or because you don't identify properly and understand what it is. That this is not the time for me to address this. This is not the time for me to have something to say back towards what's been said to me regarding what it is that I know I'm supposed to be doing or regarding what it is that has something to say regarding where I'm going because I'm in the process of purpose. You will take those things and you will allow those things to pull you from where you should be. Here's my moment of transparency. I know what it's like to be focused and have things come to pull me away and try to consume my emotions, try to consume my thoughts and get me to come from where I should be so that I can have a side conversation with those who do not get or even are trying to get and understand my purpose. Those that just came to be that distraction, just came to pull my focus. I know what that's like. I also know what it's like to have those who have the attitude of we're going to see how this is going to turn out. But I had to understand that just because I'm in my place with God and just because I understand what my purpose is and just because I get 
where it is I'm supposed to be. Does it mean others are even going to try to understand? Does it mean I have to go and address every negative word spoken? Does it mean I have to go and allow my focus to be pulled in a different direction? Have I been tempted to correct and address? Oh, yes. This is something that I had to learn through trial and error. This is something that I had to learn and grow to because when, while being in it, I didn't see that this is exactly what was going on. But once I decided to just pull back, get in position, remain in position and stay focused on where it is I know I need to be and be focused on where I know I need to be going as far as direction, I was able to see what's the distraction. I was able to see what came to pull my focus just by words spoken. When you're on your journey to purpose, when you're in your process, let your focus be where it needs to be. Let your trust continue to be in God and don't allow ninth hour distractions to pull you from where you need to be. And don't allow ninth hour distractions to hinder the direction God is taking you in. Don't let those ninth hour distractions cause you to come off your path, your journey going towards purpose. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, just to say thank you. I thank you for life, health, and strength. God, I ask you that those that are in the process, Lord, of experiencing the words of those misinterpreting whatever they've said, Those that are standing by watching just to see the outcome of their journey of fulfilling purpose. Those that God are pulling focus at this time or attempting to pull the focus in their ninth hour as they go towards purpose. Lord, I'm asking you to give those that are on their journey towards purpose the strength to keep going forward and to continue to be in a place of not entertaining the things that have come to be a distraction, the things that have come to pull their focus, and that, Lord, they will allow themselves to be strengthened in this hour and to not fall to the temptation of addressing things that don't need to be addressed and being reminded that they are to continue on the path, the journey that you have for them is a go towards purpose that everything doesn't require a response that this journey is a going towards purpose is between you and them lord i thank you i praise you and i glorify your name in jesus name i pray amen you all be blessed thank you for joining me on deck in the triage room to get the music you hear in this podcast or to stay connected visit my website ursulacamille.com that's u-r-s-e-l-a-c-a-m-i-l-l-e.com sign up on my email list get merch and more have an area of pain you want to address in the triage room send your email to the triage room at gmail.com i'm your host ursula camille signing off be blessed one touch in your life change. Did you know that Jesus reigns? One touch in your life to change.